Star Sector. Abandon all social life, ye who enter here. Welcome to the Perseian Sector, Captain. There's a lot to see. It's been a long time since I've played a game that has consumed my every waking thought like Star Sector has these last few weeks. I've not woken up early from work and foregone precious hours of sleep or social commitments just to play a game in years. Not really since Elden Ring, which was, what, two years ago now? As such, I think it belongs in that niche of passion projects, not necessarily related to Elden Ring, but made by tiny teams, I believe only about a handful of people worked on this one that so often put large studios to shame in their scope and ambition. Games like Kenshi, Dwarf Fortress, Rimworld, and Mountain Blade Warband spring to mind when I grasp for comparisons. That last one perhaps most of all since, at a glance, Star Sector is very similar to Mountain Blade given that it is an open world where you collect troops, or I guess ships, and can within reason do whatever you want but in a top-down 2D space environment. Everything from selling drugs to desperate miners working 30-hour days, chasing bounties for delicious profit and glory, smuggling farm-grown organs for whatever purpose those fulfill, to traveling to far-off and unknown systems seeking old tech, founding a colony and defending it with your life, or bombing planets to exploit their economy for your personal gain. It's all there at your fingertips. And it's the closest thing to heroin I'll probably ever try. Probably. Now for some lore. In days of old, humanity ruled the stars and spanned across the cosmos using what were essentially stargates to cross galaxies and lived under the rule, more or less, of the Dominion of Man, which was essentially a giant unified space polity, although there were fringe organizations and corporations vying for power as well during this time. With the use of AI so advanced they could run colonies and fleets of ships on their own, humanity became prosperous. The future seemed unlimited. But in a way, much like the Hyperion novels and many other science fiction stories to boot, everything went wrong, as it does. The gate stopped working, and the humans of the Perseian sector where again the game takes place lost contact with the domain, trapped in a backwater system with no way to escape. Now no one knows why this happened. Some blame it on a figure known as Lud's capture and his inevitable martyrdom, the AI turning on humanity, be it for a joke or for some malicious intent, or one of the various corporations cutting them off for profit margins. Really all theories could be correct, and in any case this event became known as the Collapse. In game it has been 206 cycles, or standard earth years, since the Collapse, and humanity has stuck to the center or core of this sector, clinging to what life they can manage, and formed new or expanded existing factions in this wake. Now they constantly war with one another over everything from resources to religious differences, but occasionally trade and get along nice too. Unfortunately for humanity, they can't easily recover from this collapse as they don't know or have access to plans to fix the gates or really make anything at all, and so they exist in what is essentially a hyper-futuristic medieval sort of society where all they can do is plug holes and pray to Lud for salvation. This unfortunate technological amnesia, which doesn't affect everybody but I'll explain that in a second, happened because of rampant DRM and copyright laws by various space corporations, which essentially made all plans for things like ships and weaponry unobtainable, unless you yourself or one of the factions happen to find one of the various blueprints, then I guess you can make whatever you want. As such, many of the ships and game have existed for hundreds of years and are, well, kind of garbage, while other more industrious factions have taken full advantage of enterprising spacers to find and deliver them top-of-the-line blueprints to bury the competition in 1,000 tons of nuclear glory. A truly beautiful sight. The player can join one of these factions and take a commission with them as a sort of mercenary and do various story and randomized missions for them, although you won't really be considered a full member of these groups. At present, there are five joinable factions in the vanilla game. The Hegemony, who are remnants of the old Domain of Man, and organized in the chaotic wake of the Collapse to try and bring order to the system. They work sort of like military police and are generally, I would say, good aligned, more or less. Tritachian, who are a morally questionable megacorporation and have no scruples about buying or selling drugs, organs, or even the dreaded AI course that other factions have banned. This happened on account of two AI wars that happened to post-collapse, both of which were Tritachian's fault. They're more or less the game's joinable bad guys. I mean, there's also the Bloodic Path and the Pirates, but you can't really join them. I also happen to join them because they have cool ships. The Ludic Church are a low-tech, relatively speaking, religious order who blame technology for the downfall of man, which is probably true, and who use their militant order, the Knights of Lud, to enforce the word of Lud, a sort of collapse-era prophet, in their doctrines. They also believe AI to be the devil, which is again probably true, and have a radical offshoot known as the Ludic Path, who want to destroy all technology by force with unbridled terrorism. The Persian Sector are kind of like the anti-hegemony, and they broke away even though they aren't necessarily evil, they just didn't want to pay taxes. The Sindari and Diktat were founded by a rogue hegemony admiral who declared himself an emperor, kind of. He rules a military dictatorship which you basically can use for refueling and smuggling blue lobster from. There's also an independent faction which I think you technically belong to by default, but you can't join necessarily. There's also space pirates who operate how you would expect, and a couple other groups who I'm unfortunately not at liberty to speak of. For my own story, I began as a bounty hunter named Captain Saturn, who upon entering the wide open system decided he would explore the potential of Lud's guiding light, which led me down the very well done Ludic Church Pilgrim quest. Even though the game is still very much in work, it hasn't even reached 1.0 or release status and is updated usually once or twice a year, there's a lot of really stellar writing that I'd like to call out in the general and main storyline quests you can do for various factions. Even the minor flavor of something like the bars where you collect
select contracts are really excellent, as is the art which brings the games to life and lends much to the imagination as the beautiful text lulls you into this fascinating setting. The various character portraits also do a lot of heavy lifting for exemplifying or describing each faction's personality with just a picture from pirate to corporate dog alike. However, before you can really enjoy any of these things, the world, the text, the characters, the story, you first have to learn how to actually play the game, which is not as easy as it sounds. Moving around is easy, of course, you just point and click. Just make sure you slow down in hyperspace storms and, and don't fly too close to any suns and you'll probably be okay. Combat, however, is is not, it is, it's difficult. Using a directional system like Mountain Blade, Star Sector's combat will feel awkward and floaty to newcomers, despite the fact that it actually functions very well once you get used to it. The entire system boils down to basically just two things, your hull and your flux. Your hull is essentially your HP. Basically in combat, if your hull reaches zero, your ship is disabled or worse, destroyed. Either way, you can't use it. The same is true for enemies. You can avoid this by protecting the hull of your ship with armor, which you can add with one of the several in-game modifications you can find or buy, or more importantly, with its pre-installed shield, which generates something known as flux when hit. You also generate flux when firing your weapons so there's a flux bar that'll be going up or down depending on how much you're getting hit or not hit this can be dissipated also by venting although this leaves you exposed to enemy attacks as you have to vent completely before stopping so try to do this in a safe space if your flux gets too high you'll overload and be at the mercy of enemy fleets who have none and will gang up on you and run them pockets okay be careful out there you can also be disabled by certain enemy weapons, so make sure you watch your flanks. I mean disabled by, they can turn off your engines and then just shoot you from the back and blow you up that way. Unless you have a 360 degree shield like this carrier, then you can probably do whatever you want, although still watch your flux. After each encounter, that is enemy encounter, your or some enemy ships can be recovered if they were destroyed in the end screen, but it costs supplies and usually means the ship will have acquired something known as D mods or damage mods, which are a permanent debuff you have to either pay to remove or acquire the in-game skill which repairs them for you, which I highly recommend. Definitely rush that skill. Damage that does not destroy you will affect combat readiness, which makes your ship prone to malfunctions once it dips below a certain percentage as well. This too is fixed with supplies, which if you run out of, something I did a lot of early game, your periodic repairs will stop and your combat readiness will dip until it reaches zero and you start losing crew members and access to the ship itself. Combat does admittedly take a while to get used to from the player and fleet perspective. You do command more than just your ship, and as you acquire more ships, you have to learn how to properly use those too. Plus the mods and weapons you have to install on them, your fuel, your crew requirements, what are marines, what are they for, they're for raiding. It's a bunch of stuff, not to mention leveling up yourself and your crew to properly augment your fleet the way you want. All this to say, learning combat is tough, but it's also incredibly rewarding. There's nothing quite like learning your ship and watching enemy ships explode under your power. But take it slow for the first few hours or you'll probably be the one exploding, just an FYI. Thankfully, there are three tutorials you can do and should do to not only give you your starting ships, but also because they allow you to learn the basics before jumping headlong into hyperspace and your premature death. Although for the more experienced pilot who've already done this tutorial, there are a few other starts you can choose so that you can skip it if you so wish. For the more peaceful or at least economically minded spacer, there is also a real-time market in Star Sector you can challenge and exploit to your heart's content, either honestly by buying low demand items for cheap and selling them to high demand worlds who perhaps don't produce or have a deficit of said good. You can also cause deficits by destroying people's spaceports. I don't have any footage of that because I'm not a monster, but it is a good way to make money. Smuggling is also an age old tradition and is alive and well here in the sector as well. Anything is possible with enough will, although I personally don't go in on that sort of thing as again, I prefer to hunt down bounties and old tech, but I'm told it's quite lucrative. I did smuggle a lot of lobster early game, but I didn't feel really morally compromised by giving people seafood. Keep in mind that on each station, you have to contend with both the open and black market, the open having an incredibly high trade tariff rating of 30% per every transaction, which eats into your profit and costs. The black market doesn't have those, but generates suspicion levels, which will cause authorities to randomly stop and search you, which would be inconvenient if you happen to be smuggling or carrying something like, I don't know, an AI core, which they don't like. Worse, you can't just drop it out of the side hatch because they'll pick it up and take it anyway. It's not like Kenshi where you can just drop your hashish on the ground and they won't notice. You can talk your way out of these situations if you have a story point, which you unlock in the game by leveling up and doing other things. But these are finite and should be used semi-sparingly. You don't really want to use your story point every time you get caught by the police just because you're smuggling some drugs. But regardless of how you do it, you do need to make money somehow. As with most games, it's the biggest part of the early, mid, and late game. You need to buy supplies, ships, fuel, upgrade your colony, or pay a handy bribe when someone comes to ask if said colony is being run by an AI. Which, of course it isn't, but you are willing to pay them not to check 
or to sell that AI core for a large profit to the right buyer, because as always, the numbers must go up. Exploring the widest reaches of space takes time as you will, again, have to build your way up in strength and experience before you're ready to take on larger challenges, both in terms of enemies and supply management. If you happen to say, run out of fuel in hyperspace and fall into a black hole, well, you learned an important lesson about managing your abilities, although the cautious never achieve anything and should also never be hired to be an officer in your fleet. Missions, the easiest way to gain a quick buck, are usually faction specific and are acquired either from Intel, set by various relay comps throughout the core of the system, from in-hub tavern or quest bar givers, or from contacts you've made from the various factions. Reputation, which you earn through these quests, is an important tool to make sure people don't hate you unless you happen to take on one of those affirmation commissions and your faction decides to fight one of the other ones, then you can do whatever you want. Although you should do whatever you want within reason because some of the negatives will still carry over. Although you could probably salvage some new ships, so you know, it's up to you. Doing a commission also allows you to purchase faction specific ships with the right amount of reputation, some of which are pretty glorious. There's a ton of different ships in the game, even just in the vanilla game, and it'll take you a little while to figure out what kind of fleet you wanna make. You could be a carrier heavy person. You could be somebody who prefers a lot of small ships who just have a lot of firepower. It's gonna take a lot of experimentation on your own part to figure that out. But eventually you'll make enough money, have enough ships and ask yourself, when do I start becoming one of the big boys? So you set out into uncharted space and survey planets with your crew until you find one suitable for your colony. These are determined by survey ratings, although you don't necessarily have to wait for the perfect one. You could just build one wherever you really want. Although it's better if the rating is higher because usually that means you can make more money off of it. These can either be a lush planet where you could farm a lot of resources from, or it could be a planet that just has a lot of ore which you can pollute to your heart's content. Either way, you want to build up something from nothing and make a metropolis of trade, industry, or just prosperity. This is when the game really opens up as you continue to expand, open trade ports, make profits, fight against factions, fight against terrorist insurgents, put an AI core into your colony and piss off the various factions, watch the numbers go up and become the hyper-capitalist as led intended probably. It's wonderful, and I've lost all human connection because of this game. It's truly something special. In short, Star Sector is a game unlike any other. From doing simple bounties to exploring the furthest horrors of deep space, I've had a blast with it. And this is all vanilla. There are hundreds of various quality of life mods and faction-based mods which add hundreds of hours of content to the game. All this is to say you need to shut up, open your wallet, and go buy this game right now. Open the website, it's linked in the description, and go buy it. It is one of the most single pleasant surprises I've ever experienced in gaming. You'll be supporting a team who clearly has a passion for game design and world crafting. Buying it is a little jank as the website they used to get the key is very old, but ignore that and do it anyway. I also want to stress that I played this prior to buying it because technically all you need to try the game out is someone's game key, which never expires. I'm not going to share mine with you because I feel a little weird morally about doing that, but there are places on the internet that you can find one if you don't want to buy it right away. Even if at first glance this doesn't seem like something you would go after, this is something that I didn't think I was going to go after either, and after my crippling addiction and withdrawals I would feel at my office job yearning for the call of galactic cannon fire and explosions, I can confirm that it is something truly special. Seriously, just, just go play it. I promise it's a game you won't soon forget. And that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really want to thank my Discord for putting me onto this game introducing me to it and then also helping me out with um, some community streams that we did where i got to learn a little bit from them because they know a lot more about everything than i do if you like this video make sure you like comment subscribe as it lets me and youtube know you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more of it if you'd like me to do more reviews like this please let me know i'm very interested in this sort of thing so if it's something that you enjoy i would be happy to do more of them if you like my content and you like this channel you'd like to consider supporting the channel you can consider becoming a channel member we have two membership tiers squires and knights which you can see here and that's gonna be it for me thank you so much for watching i'm soul this has been shut up and buy star sector and i will happily see you in the next one